Oh, what? This? This? Yeah, I can't be trusted to go near a hairdresser's. <laughs> actually alone in the house for once which is really unusual but that does mean that I can film at like 9 30 at night <laughs> I feel like this is just the future when I get my own flat <laughs> okay so what I needed today was for just I think a little bit more of a relaxed filming area so this is what we're going to be doing, just chilling out, all nice and cosy, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about vintage fashion and historical accuracy, and also a little tiny bit maybe about gatekeeping. So I get quite a lot of people who talk to me on Instagram especially about vintage fashion and how they'd really like to get into it, and one of the most common questions I get is, am I allowed to do this? And I always find this question really interesting. It's as if they think that there is this very specific set of rules to vintage fashion and if you don't follow it, you won't be allowed to dress that way. I kind of understand where this comes from because especially I've noticed on places like TikTok, now that I've joined there, but I've also seen it a lot on Instagram over the years and even on YouTube as well, is there are a sort of subgroup of, I'll call them the kind of purest Karens of the vintage community. Um, sometimes they're people who don't even dress vintage or indulge in the sort of vintage styled lifestyle themselves, but just people who have apparently watched a lot of content and appear to be PhD level academic scholars in history and think that they have the right to comment on everything even remotely vintage related and say, <coughs> well I think you'll find that's not historically accurate. Um, that's definitely not what they would have worn. That flat screen TV in the background really not period appropriate. And I find this very interesting to say the least. <laughs> now I would like to preface this by saying that the vintage community as a whole as I have experienced it and as I've seen other people online experience it can be such a wholesome and accepting and really really wonderful, welcoming space for all kinds of people, whether they're people who are just admiring of the style, people who like to mix in vintage influence into their style, people who like to be very, very on the nose and stick quite firmly to one decade, um, and also people who just love to live a vintage-inspired lifestyle or wear vintage inspired fashion all the time or sometimes or only for special events or as part of their creative process. I found some really really wonderful friends through the vintage community both in real life and online and I think it has been such a wonderful addition to my life to find all of these like-minded people who enjoy dressing up in the same way that I do even if they don't enjoy necessarily the exact same aesthetic as me. But having said that, there can definitely be some people who are super duper critical and gatekeepy and kind of passive aggressive or sometimes just outright mean to people who are perhaps just starting out in the vintage industry or people who I swear just go around trying to find things wrong in various vintage videos and content online. These are the that's not historically accurate people. The people who will comment on a video of someone wearing an actual dress from the decade that they are talking about and say that that's not what would have been worn in that decade. A genuine vintage dress. What do you mean? And I haven't experienced too much of this luckily. I have had a few people being weird over the years 
but to be honest I have way more trouble with really creepy middle-aged men than I do anything else on this fine internet space. <laughs> also a lot of people with apparently either no social skills or awareness or just no idea of what a sense of appropriate boundary is on what to say to a person that you don't know on the internet. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. I wanted to make this video as kind of a reassurance to all of my vintage friends out there that you are doing great. You are doing wonderfully, you are doing fine, and there is no such thing as complete historical accuracy. If that sounds a bit confusing, then let me explain. So, when we talk about historical accuracy, what people mean is doing things, wearing things, and owning things, and arranging them in the way that people back in the time frame of history that you're trying to emulate would have done it. So, for example, um, wearing a 1950s dress and pairing that with a hairstyle that would be appropriate to the year that even the dress is from and shoes that are matching with what they would have worn in that decade and a bag and doing your makeup in the style in which they would have done in that decade and doing your hair that way and driving a car that would have been driven in that decade and decorating your house in things that would have been around in that decade but the problem with this way of thinking is, number one, it is incredibly, incredibly constricting. Hey Google, is constrictive a word? The problem with this mode of thinking is that, number one, it is incredibly constrictive. It means that you are very, very confined to an incredibly narrow, narrow period of history when, in today's modern era, we have all of history to explore and to take inspiration from. The second problem is that it's impossible. Our world has moved on so, so much and things have changed in the way that we live, in the way that we do things, in the way that things are manufactured and built in the 70 years that it's been since the 1950s, for example let alone if you're into anything earlier like the 1940s, 30s, 20s, 1910s, or even earlier, even things like the 1960s and 70s fashion, the way that we do things, the way that we decorate, the way that even houses are built, the kind of things, knickknacks that you can find, are so, so different than how they were back then. Naturally, in the evolution of lifestyle and fashion and beauty and all of those things, as time progresses, there are always, always, always going to be methods and products and tiny nuances and facets of the way that things were done in a particular historical period that just get lost along the way. It is kind of impossible to be completely historically accurate and I think it's ridiculous that we would hold ourselves to that standard. There are a lot of people online and obviously in real life that take very very meticulous care to curate for example a home that is very specifically tailored and filled painstakingly with things that have been found through months, even years of collecting and researching and thrifting and all that kind of thing to be a very, very careful kind of replica of a home from, say, the 1950s. I follow someone on TikTok called Uniquely Rochelle who has one of these homes. And that's incredible. Her house is gorgeous and there are like, oh, there are things in that house that I want. But for so many people, it's just kind of not attainable. Someone living in, for example, a block of flats in the Midlands of England is not going to be able to get the same dreamy aesthetic effect as someone who is living in a house that was built in the 1950s in America, for example, because a lot of 1950s nostalgia seems to be specifically American. Don't know why. 
but that doesn't mean that they can't decorate their home in a way that they find to be really aesthetically pleasing and vintage inspired and in a way that is fitting to their particular aesthetic and their vision and they should not be critiqued and kind of yelled at by randos on the internet for that. Similarly with fashion, if you are just starting out in vintage fashion, it's a lot, it's really overwhelming and some of the clothes can be incredibly expensive and if it's just something that you're starting to dip your toes into, you don't want to shell out a hundred pounds for a single dress or skirt if you're not sure whether you're going to like it long term. Getting things that are inspired by the period and just building the wardrobe and the style in your own way and in your own tastes is really important and I think seeing all of this online criticism can really hinder people from doing that kind of naturally and organically. It is easy to get a little bit testy when you see a video of someone saying this is exactly how things would have been done in a certain decade and you can spot some things that are really obviously wrong. For example, those videos about this is how they dressed in the 1920s and someone's wearing a dress that is like comes to barely their mid thigh and if it's not the swimming costume then no, that's not correct and it can be really frustrating. If you have to comment at all because really it's not hurting anyone then just trying to point out in a sort of kind and constructive way that oh, I, oh typically I thought that dresses in the 1920s were longer, say about mid-calf then that is a much better way of doing it than kind of becoming a bit of an internet Karen. <laughs> you know, that really insufferable person who's constantly like, <laughs> actually, sweetheart, and it's really, really patronizing and Ugh! they do my head in those sorts of comments. I can't stand them. I myself am not massively bothered with historical accuracy. I like to mix aspects of the 1940s and 50s in my styling. I have pieces that are more 1920s and 30s inspired. I have modern pieces in my room. I decorate my room in a way that just makes me happy, fuels the good old serotonin. My hair is obviously a very unnatural, not period accurate colour and my nails for example I just do in a way that yes is vintage inspired but it's also just how I really like them to be and is something that makes me happy and that goes with my outfits in a way that makes me happy and lately I found myself really drawn to those more fun bold pin-up-y styles and colours that are still very obviously 1950s and using 1950s cuts and prints and lengths and things but I'm not really massively bothered about looking necessarily like I just stepped off the pages of a Christian Dior advert from 1956. I'm just looking for things that I think make me happy. Fashion is so much fun and is such a fun way to express ourselves and you do not have to worry about being historically accurate, about being 100% true to an era and about following a very strict pathway and set of guidelines and rules. Because where's the fun in that? You should experiment, you should just organically... I don't know why I'm being all like sway. You should experiment, you should have fun, you should let your style evolve naturally over a period of years and find what you really like, find what really suits you and understand that that will also change throughout time as your personality changes. You can incorporate vintage fashion in a style that is completely new and unique to you. You can try and keep it a little bit more prop, sort of, I'm trying not to say proper vintage, like very true to the era and you can keep it a bit more loosey and inspired, you can mix decades, you can mix colours and prints and just make it completely, completely fun to you. 
If strangers on the internet have been really mean to you lately about not being historically accurate or you've seen a lot of those comments and you think it's really putting you off and kind of making you feel a bit nervous and unsure, take a deep breath. Hi, welcome to the vintage community. It can be a bit of a mess around here, but I promise you there are so many people who are kind, who will be supportive, who love what you're doing and who think that no matter what kind of vintage you're rocking and how you're doing it, you're doing an amazing job, you look amazing and as long as you feel great and that it is true to you, that is the really important thing here. And I cannot wait to welcome you in with open arms and I know so many people who feel the same way. I know that this wasn't necessarily a particularly structured video, but I just absolutely had to make it. I have been kind of stressed out seeing a lot of kind of gatekeepy behaviour as if only certain people can get into the vintage community and are allowed to dress and live vintage. And that's just not the case at all. It doesn't matter what your size is. It doesn't matter what your decade of preference is and if it's very strict or if it's very loosey-goosey. It doesn't matter what your hair looks like. It doesn't matter if you have visible tattoos or piercings. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what your economic status is. It doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter, okay? As long as you are happy, if you are having fun, if you are trying things out, that is good enough for me and I think that should be good enough for anyone. And if anyone disagrees, they're clearly just really bored and we should honestly kind of feel sorry for them. I am planning a lot more fun fashion and lifestyle content and hauls and hair tutorials and I promise that I will be getting those all out to you very very soon. I kind of can't wait for making a lot more content this year and I will see you all very very soon with it. Please do remember to have courage and be kind and make all of your dreams come true. We're a tiny bit of a mess today, but it's okay. <laughs>